Most of us think of international borders as invincible but clear-cut lines. Stand on one side and you are in one country. Stand on the other, you are in another country. Borders are drawn by wars, treaties, natural features like rivers or lakes, and political machinations that sometimes leave countries with the strangest of shapes. The job description for political borders is simple and straightforward enough to draw a line between areas with different rules and rulers. Africa is a continent where borders can get pretty complicated. The main reason for this is the colonial era, where European nations divided the continent into spheres of influence by literally drawing the national borders as guided by their interests, leaving countries with peculiar national borders. That's why you will find some countries with clearly defined shapes, while others not so much. Today, we zoom in on some of Africa's most egregious examples of border weirdness. First off, let's head to the Democratic Republic of Congo, which has not one but two panhandles. It's easy enough spotting a panhandle on a pan. Just look at the part you use to lift it off the stove. A pan handle is a narrow projection extending away from the rest of the country as a tentacle does and is usually a bizarre add-on that tugs away from a country's main mass. The first one here is called the Congo Pedicle. This stretch of land cuts over 200 kilometers into Zambia and varies between 70 to 100 kilometers wide, almost splitting Zambia into two. The weirdest thing about this border is the way it was created. The Congo was colonized by Belgium and Zambia was a British colony. The two sides couldn't agree on the colonial border. The Belgians wanted access to the rich swamp area here that had a lot of wildlife which they could hunt for their trophies. So they decided to ask for help from the Italians. Knowing practically nothing about these two countries, the Italian king basically drew a line on the map and all parties agreed it looked good. That's the ridiculous reason why this border has this strange look today. Belgian King Leopold II, who had brutally seized the African landmass as his personal possession, created this panhandle here on the left called Congo Central, so that the Belgians could access this massive colony from the ocean to transport slaves, minerals, ivory and rubber back to Europe. Colonization brought another weird border in Africa in Namibia's Caprivi Strip that stretches 450 kilometers inland to Zambia. The Caprivi Strip was named after the German Chancellor Leo von Caprivi. He wanted the border of the then German colony to cross the Zambezi River so that Germans could use it to navigate to the eastern coast of Africa. In a treaty with Great Britain, the Germans gave up their rights to Zanzibar to Britain in exchange for this tiny stretch of land today known as the Caprivi Strip. Today, the existence of the Caprivi Strip means that Botswana is almost entirely blocked off from bordering Zambia and Namibia almost borders Zimbabwe just 200 meters down the Zambezi River. The Germans had, however, been tricked. The Zambezi River has one of the world's largest waterfalls and is practically not navigable. Hence, this whole move, while creative, ended up being practically useless. The Caprivi Strip nonetheless created the only place on Earth where four countries meet at a single point. This is called a cadre point. Cadre points where four political entities touch in a single point are rare, and here it exists in the intersection of Zambia, Namibia, Zimbabwe, and Botswana. 
Next, we have the Gambia and Senegal. The Gambia is the smallest country on the African mainland and is shaped unlike any other nation in the world. It is long and skinny, just 48 kilometers or 30 miles across its widest points, stretching long and narrow like a snake as it winds its way along the banks of the Gambia River. And it is almost completely surrounded by Senegal. This weird situation means that Senegalese travelers living in the north of Senegal who don't want to take the 10-hour detour around the Gambia will have to cross through two different border checkpoints just to enter their own country. Once they leave Senegal into the Gambia and then once again when they leave the Gambia back into Senegal. There is a legendary story rooted in the colonial history of West Africa that accounts for the Gambia's unusual shape. There are only a few rivers on the coast of West Africa that run from the desert to the coast, and the French controlled the mouth of the more northerly one, the Senegal River. The Gambia River, which is further south, where the British had more control, runs parallel. And as the story goes, a British warship simply navigated up the river, shooting cannonballs off either side and claiming the land that fell within the cannon range. The result, a river-shaped country made up solely of the strips of land on either side of the water. As bizarre and improbable as this story seems, there are nuggets of truth to it. The British did claim rights of the Gambia River, and the country's strange shape emerged from conflict between the two colonizing powers. There may even have been cannonballs involved. Either way, a map of Senegal looks quite odd, with the long ribbon of land that forms the country called the Gambia, protruding more than halfway through its territory. Of all the borders drawn up in Africa by colonial powers, one of the most ridiculous has to be that between these two countries. Which border anomaly in Africa seems the most bizarre to you? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Any border buff worth his or her salt will tell you about the border anomaly found between Egypt and Sudan. They clearly share a border. It's just no one really knows where it is. Each country disputes what the Egypt-Sudan border is, with Sudan thinking it is the green line below and Egypt thinking it is the red line. These disputed borders lead to two contested areas of land, Bir Tawil and Halaib Triangle. But there is a catch. None of them want to claim Bir Tawil because if they do, it would weaken their claim to the much more desired Halaib Triangle which has access to the Red Sea, it is more habitable and it is much larger. Bir Tawil gives the words no man's land a whole new meaning. While most countries clash brutally over land claims, there is one 800 square mile piece of land in Africa that is owned by no one. It is the only unclaimed landmass in the world outside of Antarctica. Next, let's head to Morocco. The internet is awash with these photos of cross-border points from Morocco into Spain. Ever wondered how this is possible? A land border between these two countries which are on different continents. To understand this, we have to look at a map. You see, Morocco is actually home to some Spanish exclaves in its territory. The Morocco-Spain border consists of three borderlines totaling 18.5 kilometers around the Spanish territories of Ceuta with an 8-kilometer border, Peñón de Vélez de la Gomera with a 75-meter-long border forming what is the shortest border in the world, and Melilla which is a 10-kilometer border. These three exclaves form part of Spain's territories in Africa, which also include a number of small islands off the Moroccan coast. Around 500 years ago, 
the Spanish invaded Africa and took over dots of land in Morocco's territory. Some of these cities and territories have since been returned to Morocco, but the ones that remain today have for the most part been occupied by Spain for half a millennia. Repeated Moroccan attempts to wrestle back control of the exclaves by force during the 18th and 19th centuries failed, culminating in the Hispano-Moroccan War of 1859 to 1860, which resulted in a Spanish victory. At present, Spain remains in control of the territories and refuses to discuss the issue of their sovereignty with Morocco. The cities of Ceuta and Melilla are bordered from Morocco by six-meter-high walls in response to an increase in the number of migrants attempting to breach the fence. In 2002, this little rocky uninhabited island named Isla Peregil nearly resulted in an all-out war. Both Spain and Morocco claim it, but Morocco occupied it and had 12 soldiers hoist their national flag. This move by Morocco sparked an international crisis that saw the Arab League backing Morocco while NATO and the European Union backed up Spain. Several warships actually surrounded the island and a submarine was deployed about a kilometer away. Other reinforcements were also sent to isolated Spanish outposts in the area. The 12 Moroccan soldiers were ultimately arrested. This bloodless armed conflict all happened in the name of this rock, which has since been declared a Norman land, but is still claimed by both sides. Africa, and I'm sure the rest of the world, is full of strange and quirky borders, and while some are more famous than others, there is no denying that they make for a fascinating insight into how politics and geopolitics play a role in the borders we have today. Our desire to inspire a passion for learning about Africa runs deep. If you'd like to have some better understanding of the continent, start now by subscribing and you'll be on your way. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.